3D printing wood. That's next. So this is kind of cool. We've heard a lot about different kinds of filaments, including we're starting to see filaments that echo real life, like copper or metal or steel or iron or wood. So the folks at Lulzbot and Colorfab provided me with their wood fill filament to give a shot. It is a PLA based filament that is supposed to be wood. The result after playing with finishing and that sort of thing were two bowls, this bowl and this one. And they're wood-like. They're not they're not quite wood, but they're not quite plastic. They're something else. So for the rest of this session, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at how these were produced, take a look at my very limited attempts to finish them properly, and then I'll give you my conclusions at the end. Before we get started, let me give you a disclaimer. I am a computer scientist and an educator, not a woodworker. So the last time I did anything resembling woodwork was in Woodshop back quite a while ago. So uh, those of you who have a clue about how to work with wood, please feel free to leave a comment, advice, just try not to be too hard on me. Um, anyway, let's take a look at wood fill in 3D printing. Okay, so let's make one of those bowls. It's a relatively straightforward process. We're gonna start by creating a large rectangle. Let's make this thing about 400 by about 400. So what we, as you can see, if we zoom out, we have just a great big rectangle on top of our work surface. So then I'll show you where that comes in. The next thing I'm gonna do is create a sphere. Let's give that a radius of 100. So we now have a big sphere on top of our big rectangle. We want to drop that sphere down so it's flat and so the rectangle and the sphere are both on the work surface. And if I'm lucky we should be able to show that by hitting clear glass. There you go. And so you can see to make the frosted glass. So you can see now through you can see how one is on top of the other. So I'm going to take the rectangle and I am now going to lift it by 100. So now you can see that the rectangle is intersecting the sphere. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this, I'm going to bring this up higher so you can't see the sphere except inside the tank that is the rectangle. And the purpose of this is I'm going to use the rectangle to delete the sphere. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to say subtract, and from the sphere, I am going to subtract the rectangle. Voila. And that gives us this half circle bowl shape thing. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to hollow out the bowl. And it turns out we have an interesting little tool for that, which is called shell. And I'm just going to click the shell, and there we go. I'm going to make the thickness inside 10, so we can play around with the edges. And uh, let's, in fact, see what happens if we, there we go. As you can see, I'm filleting the edge. Filleting is basically a rounding process. You can see how it rounds the thing off. And I just did three on each side. So I have filleted the edge. Now I have a nice smooth bowl, but I still have that hole to cut out the, um, the handle area. So I'm gonna create another sphere. Let's make this, 60 in diameter and as you can see it's now intersecting I'm going to raise this up a bit just bring it up a ways and actually that's a pretty good intersect but I'm going to actually bring it in to the bowl a little bit like so and again you don't want to separate it and make it nice but let's, let's home that there we go so you can see that this thing is sort of a bulbous part of it and I'm going to once again subtract from the ball the sphere. Oops. And there we have it's a little bit bigger hole than the other one, but it'll do for our purposes. And I should be able to take, let's zoom in a bit. Got to make sure you select the actual line you want to make the fillet on. 
and as you can see it's one continuous line and then rather than using the pull arrows I just typed in and didn't like three it likes two because it needs to fit in this space and so that is how you make all that work and there you go back that up a little bit that's our bowl and now a little bit of time-lapse this was printed on the Lulzbot mini printer and here you go there's the bowl I have the two uh, the two finished bowls this is the first one zoom the focus up kind of almost feels like balsa wood given the um, the infill and a little like cardboard here's the second one this one has a little bit of a design in it that doesn't exactly work and as you can see there's a hole kind of overdid the 3d print and you can see the hole on the other side but I also have some tack cloth and some 120 grit sandpaper. So what I'm going to do now, let me move this out of the way. I'm sitting at my finishing bench out in the garage. And what I am going to do is I am going to apply the 120 grit sandpaper to the bowl as so. And since it's about ex as exciting to watch it as, as it is for me to do, I, there you go, see, isn't that exciting? I will come back when I'm done sending the whole thing, or both of the whole things. So I've decided to go against the grain because the uh, 3D printer leaves the stratification mark. So I'm going up and down this way, and it's still boring. There is a certain zen to this process, but right now, even with the air conditioner on out here, it's 80 degrees, and I don't know, zen is not necessarily getting it, for, doing it for me right now. But I'm going to do a little bit more sanding, and I'll go do something else for a while, and I'll come back to this. Okay, so for my first attempt, I'm going to try to use, I'm going to try to do this bowl. Now, I've got this stuff, which I thought was a wood-colored lacquer. It might turn out to be black, so I'm taking the bowl I don't like as much. And I'm using that with it. And I'm going to, let's see. Yeah, I'm going to try to affix it to this little iPod thing here so that I have something to hold it up when I spray. I've got some double-sided sticky tape. Which if you've seen some of my other projects, you know I am particularly partial to. So I have the double-sided sticky tape. I have the bowl, which I am centering on the double-sided sticky tape. And not entirely sure it'll get to the bottom quite well, but we'll see. I don't even know what we're going to put out with this thing, so and to be fair, I haven't sprayed with spray paint since, I don't know, a long time ago, kids. So I frankly don't know what I'm doing. So first thing I'm going to do is just hit, okay, i got something coming out. All right, so let's see. I'm going to hold this here, and I'm just going to do a short, making sure I'm pointing it vaguely in the right direction, and turn it. Well, it's not black, that's for sure. It's smelly. This spray booth is not ventilated, which it probably ought to be. So it looks like it's just putting a shinier coating on the stuff that I'm doing, which is interesting. I haven't tried spraying anything, whoops, I haven't tried spraying anything onto a 3D print before. And as you can probably tell, I do not know what I'm doing really, that's probably too much. See how? It's kind of watery. It's probably too much. Interestingly, it's hard to tell 
what I've sprayed and what I haven't. So <clears throat> I'm going to let that dry for a little bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to probably put five or six coats on. And then uh, after I've put my five or six coats on, I'll probably sand a little bit and do it again and then show you what I get as a result. Wish me luck. Okay, so my, for my second attempt, I'm going to use this, let's see, you should be able to see it there, Danish oil on this larger bowl, handy white, and gloves, which I probably should have used for spraying the spray paint, or the uh, lacquer, but I just thought of it. So, put the glove on one hand. Voila. Put a glove on the other hand. Voila. Take this Danish oil stuff and uh, hardens in the wood, not on the wood. Push down to open. All right. Theoretically, I'm doing this right. It's not coming off. There we go. Okay. And we have Danish oil. So I'm just going to take this stuff and upend it on here. Let's just, okay, I'm just rubbing it on the wood, like so, which looks like absolutely nothing. All right, let's keep going. So I'm just going to do this across the entire thing and see what we get when we're done. So bear with me. We'll be back. All right, just so you can see what this looks like on real wood, I'm putting some of this Danish oil on just a 2 by 4 This is... Um, pine I think and so I'm just putting it around the edge and it does nicely bring out the edge of the wood so let's give it a little while I'm gonna let both of these dry come back and decide whether to try a second coat and move on from there so here's the result of my work this is a piece I stopped part of the way through so you could get a feel for the um, patterning and its original color. It's not very much different from the uh, the Dutch oil or lacquer I attempted to apply. The Dutch oil is still very oily. Dutch oil is supposed to seep into the wood, at least according to the directions, and when I touch this it doesn't feel terribly oily, but when I touch this it does. So it's clearly not seeping in as well as it should in a true wood environment. The lacquer, well, it's not really the lacquer's fault or the wood fill's fault, but I didn't do that great a job with it. Um, there's puddles and all sorts of other things, but uh, as I mentioned, I haven't tried spraying anything for a really long time either. Um, neither one of them really feels like wood or looks like wood, but when I asked my wife about it, she said, well, if you had decor that was mostly wood, this would fit in nicely, probably a little bit more so than true plastic, although, you know, first impressions is, it does feel and look a little more plastic than wood. In fact, it feels a lot like cardboard or paper. And as you can see from the picture over one of my shoulders here, um, the, uh, the actual filament looks like rolled up paper. It's not, it's a plastic infused wood-like substance, but it, it feels that way. It's also kind of expensive. It's roughly 53 bucks or so on Amazon. So it's a specialty filament. So, um, in terms of usefulness, well, this one, I, I put a couple of pictures you can take a look at uh, with some nice close-ups. This one, which is the one I sanded quite a bit, it's sanded very nicely. And when it's been sanded, it does not look like layered um, plastic. It really loses that layered plastic look and looks a little bit more like cork or bamboo or something like that. Although interestingly, the filament maker has a bamboo version of this. They don't have different colors, but as you can see um, from the picture again over my shoulder, uh, Rob from Instructables has made uh, a statue where he did a finishing process 
that based on, on the way he finished it made it look a lot more like wood. And I'll include a link to that in the show notes. Overall, it is an interesting material and I'm gonna wanna try other materials without a doubt. Would I use this regularly? Well, in my world, probably not. I'd probably, you know, be happy with the black plastic and 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 those sorts of things. Um, you know, you can definitely tell this is plastic and this is plastic and so forth. But they are quite a bit of a different texture from the wood fill. Is it worth buying and trying and seeing if it fits your your world and what you're trying to make? Absolutely, it is interesting. Will you probably want to do some finishing to turn it from what it comes like out off the printer to something a little bit more better? A little bit more better, there you go. More better to something um, that fits your needs better? Probably. Um, so I would say that this is, you know, it's, it's not a necessarily a prototyping material like the PLA might be. Instead, it's actually probably a crafting or design material that you may want to play with. It's, it's very interesting. And that's what's really cool about a lot of these filaments. There are a lot of design and uh, decorative filaments that are coming out that are, are fascinating and, and worth playing with. Exactly where their use is? Well, for me as a guy who likes to build, you know, rigs that hold stuff like this, um, it's not quite necessarily as applicable. Um, especially since you can see this is about the bounds of my artistic skill, although, as you saw, I did in fact design the bowl. Um, but it's got a lot of potential. It's very, very interesting. And as these things possibly come out in different colors, or if there's a dual extruder where you can actually extrude two different wood fills to create a grain, that could be very, very interesting. Now. Who would design the grain? That's an interesting question too. Is that something that you'll see in a slicer like in Simplify 3D? Or is that something that you'd have to design in your 3D program and mix and match it perfectly? I don't know. You know, this is why this is a new and fascinating area that we are exploring together. So with that, uh, go ahead and click the subscribe button if you want to see more of these explorations and uh, check out the show notes for the full article and the entire DIY IT series on 3D printing on ZDNet. And my name is David Gewurz. Have yourself a great time printing wood.